Well, hello everyone, and once again, thank you for tuning in. In today's video, we would like to go over um, implementing an ADI attitude direction indicator and an HSI horizontal situation indicator for your uh, homemade cockpit. And uh, I guess before we start that, I guess we'll just do a, a quick update on uh, where we're at on the build process. Um, basically, I just uh, switched over to PCFlights.com uh, panels and got uh, well, all the ones they sell anyway uh, installed. I just got like a handful more to install like these little ones here. And uh, I got to start on the uh, upfront controller, but uh, I need to finish that one as well. And, and that'll be done. And uh, just to see what they look like. This is a uh, emergency flight panel there. Uh, let's see, a saws panel. So that's where we're at on that process. And then we're gonna redesign the main instrument panel to make it dimensionally more accurate and also mount the ADI and HSI. So, without further ado, um, so for example, implementing the ADI and HSI, it's several ways you can go about uh, doing that. And my preferred method would have been uh, since the sim is based on Adrenos anyway, I wanted to find a chip from like Texas Instrument or Harris or uh, Maximum or uh, one of those other semiconductor um, places and uh, hopefully find a chip that uses I2C or SPI, something that the Adreno can communicate with. So I would just uh, power the chip with 26 volts AC and uh, data commands from the Adreno and use that chip to drive an ADI or HSI. So I kind of did a quick search online and didn't readily find any uh, synchro resolver chips for Adrenos. Um, and I didn't want to buy an ISA or PCI type um, I.O. card or synchro card and put it in the computer because I just wanted to stick with Adrenos running the sim. I didn't want to open up another application on the host computer that would, you know, maybe bog down the uh, flight simulator. So that would have been the preferred method. But since we didn't find any uh, chips readily available, we went with a alternate approach. And that alternate approach would be um, have the PC talk to the Adreno as usual, and the Adrenos would talk to a motor assembly that in turn would um, uh, turn the synchro resolvers transmitters to drive the ADI and HSI. And uh, that's basically what we have here. And just to go over this setup of uh, which we're gonna eventually um, put in the flight sim here um, to go over the parts that we used or, you know, possible parts. I mean, it's various ADIs, ADIs HSIs that you can get. Um, but I just went with this one from Sperry, found it used on eBay, and it was a, a reasonable price and uh, went with the Rockwell Collins uh, HSI. So also, since you know these are used items, uh, definitely would recommend getting a uh, Parts Illustrated catalog for that particular model. It'll have all your schematics of the internals and uh, just a lot of helpful information. Um, 
on that particular piece. So that was the HSI. And the same for your ADI. I would recommend getting the uh, Parts Illustrated catalog for that. So without uh, further ado, I can demonstrate a little bit how that would look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, power supply. And I guess also I should mention, um, I used a KGS Electronics inverter to get the uh, 400 Hertz. That's that guy over there. And I think I, I've mentioned uh, this particular panel right here was um, an HCP85 heading and course control panel. So I basically took it apart just to use the command transmitter synchros for our um, usage. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. <clears throat> and uh, just so you can see how it looks when it boots up, for example. I'll turn it on again. Um, so the concept would be we're using these synchro transmitters um, like this one here. If I turn uh, this particular gear, that does the uh, course indication. If I turn this one here, that's the uh, compass wheel. And you have to kind of move this one slow because in the aircraft, if it sees that your turn rate is too high, it'll think that that's a bad signal and it'll give you a warning flag. So if I spin it quick, you can see the warning flag pop out there. Um, but a realistic turn rate, um, you know, it will not give you an, uh, an error signal there. Um, let's see. This one's your uh, heading bug. You turn that wheel. And this one here, your last one would be your uh, nav pointer. So the concept wise, one reason I would recommend the Parts Illustrated um, manual is that it'll show you all the wiring that you would need to hook up for your units. So I basically just use that to know um, what pinouts to wire and I just brought out all of the signals so that uh, when we install it we can just um, tap into these uh, points here. Um, now for the simulation I still have to work on the code for it but just as a, a concept wise um, I have two motors here. This is a stepper motor and this one here is a um, servo motor. But the reason I like the servo motor, you only need one um, pulse width modulation command in order to move that motor. Where this one here, you would need four um, PWM signals. So, I mean, for the cost of one, you can still do the same thing that stepper motor is doing. And just to demo that a little bit, I'm gonna command the motor to uh, let me, I need to look over my shoulder real quick. Now I'm going to command this motor to, um, say, go to the left a little bit. So it's a continuous uh, servo, and the part number we're using for that is an FS90R. You know, they're 300, they're continuous spin servos of 360 degrees. And uh, now command it to go the other direction. And it'll spin to the left or to the right or clockwise. So the concept would be to um, make a uh, mechanical assembly. Uh, I had 
look over my shoulder real quick so I can turn this down. Okay, so the concept would be to, um, it's kind of helpful too to have a 3D printer, which I, I do have over here. It's a, a, a TAS 5 from a lose box. Um, but just to make an assembly where I mount, say, four of these servo motors to turn these gears instead of using, instead of turning these by hand, um, I would just have the motor turn it. But the thing with these uh, stepper motors and, you know, these type of servo motors, they don't know their initial position. So you would have to uh, put in a proximity switch for each gear wheel or some kind of um, gear in a potentiometer or something to that effect so that you'll know the position of this motor. Um, if you use a proximity switch, you could set like this to say, um, to this luber line here and set your proximity switch so that it trips every time it hits that line. Um, you know, that way you'll know the, pos the initial position at least of uh, your, so your servo motor. And then from that point, you can tell it to, you know, go left or right according to the SIM data in order to drive your gears. So that's going to be the concept. It'll probably take a little bit of uh, to implement, um, uh, maybe a couple of weeks to uh, come up with that particular code and set up to get it working uh, correctly. But that'll be the concept anyway. So that's pretty much it. Um, Um, those are the pieces that you could use to um, implement this type of uh, setup here. And uh, so basically it would just be your ADI, HSI, some um, synchro command transmitter motors, and uh, uh, inverter. Uh, that particular one is KGS Electronics. And... Uh, I got the HSI from a guy, uh, Ed, off of eBay, and definitely would recommend uh, uh, Ed for, you know, used avionics equipment. Uh, couldn't be happier with the HSI. Uh, it was, uh, came in in really good shape. Uh, he's an, uh, a retired uh, avionics uh, uh, guy, so um, he really knows his equipment. So if you're on eBay, I definitely recommend getting your gear from uh, Ed. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, just want to go over that concept real quick and uh, just give a, a status update of uh, where I was at in this build process. And uh, once again, uh, thank you for tuning in.